Kia ora, my name is Emil McAvoy. I'm an artist, an art writer, uh, an educator and a consultant based in Tamaki, Makoto, Auckland. I'm here Zooming for Art Collector today from Okiato, uh, the first capital of New Zealand up in the Bay of Islands. Um, I'm joined by celebrated artist Connor Clark, who is Zooming from her studio in Otatahi, Christchurch. Kia ora, welcome Connor. It's lovely to see Kia you. Me too. Um, very industrious looking studio I see behind you. Thank you. It's very full. <laughs> <laughs> Matches your shirt too, I see, which looks great. Nice Thank you. Um, we are here talking today uh, for a segment called Pull Focus um, for Art Collector, which is where we unpack a work of art and what makes that work as a work of art. So today we're going to have a look at one of Connor's recent works. Um, it's called University Oval Cricket Field, brackets described by Mark Flower Day. I'm just going to flash that on the screen for everybody uh, for a moment and then bring it back down again. And, um, and viewers can also see this on uh, Art Collector's website um, later as well. So we're going to have a look at this work today and also try and unpack that in relationship to Connor's practice and the wider series that it comes from. So I'll just stop that sharing for a moment so we can go back to, uh, to looking at our lovely faces. So Connor, um, thank you again for joining us. Um, it's a real pleasure um, to have you here. I wondered if we could um, start more generally with the series that the work comes from and how that came about. Um, well, thanks for that introduction, Emil. Um, it's very generous. Um, so this is from quite a new body of work um, that I made ooh, towards the end of last year. Um, and the body of work is called As Far As The Eye Can Reach. And it was a collaborative project. So I guess it was my first, you could say, collaboration. And I collaborated with people from the blind and low vision community. So at present, there are 10 works. Um, and this is one of them. And um, a lot of them were local, but some of them I met over the phone or on Zoom or, you know, over email. So I made a call out to um, for people to send me descriptions or call me with descriptions of um, places or experiences that they'd had outside of the home. Um, some of, you know, a lot of them were quite special experiences, so experiences that they recalled. Um, and one of those experiences was by Mark Flower Day. So that's, that resulted in this image that we see here. Mm. So let's, um, let's talk a little bit more about the work itself and, and the visuals that we're looking at. It's quite a blurry image. Um, it would have um, been made in your uh, established mode of analog photography. I believe that's large or medium format. Uh, and you also work in video. But um, I wondered if you could talk about how that work was made in terms of um, my understanding is he had a response to his local environment, as you say, and um, made a, a text. He wrote a text about that, which you then responded to by um, shooting an image uh, in your local environment, et cetera, and you know, where it is. And I wondered if you could talk to, to what people are actually seeing there, how that meant. Yeah, so maybe. I could ground it in, in, in Mark's, um, Mark's work. So in the context of an exhibition, it's, it's sort of a sound work, um, a written work, uh, work that exists also in Braille and photography. So in, in response to this description, for example, Mark's description, I um, read his description and then made a photographic response. And all of my photographic responses were, um, well, definitely not trying to translate or um, make an attempt to describe how Mark or the others see or describe place. Mm -hmm. um, I can't kind of pretend I know what it's like to be blind. I can see relatively um, well. Mm -hmm. um, and so in response to, to Mark's description, I'm, I made this photograph somewhere local. So his description was of a cricket field in Australia. Mm -hmm. And my photographic response was to a cricket field near my house. Um, so I, I wanted to stick to places, almost all the places are places that I can walk to or cycle to um, locally. So mostly within urban Christchurch. Um, what was your question again? Yeah, that so, sounds right. It was a very long, I, I think you definitely answered it. Um, I was interested so, in how the, the mechanics of the work came about. So you, you've already described well how he, um, he's had an, a visual experience. And of course, it's nice to not see these as binaries of sighted or blind. Uh, but a spectrum of, of visual experience and perception 
um, and that makes me think a lot about what we're looking at in terms of the blur of the image. Um, you've really well described how that was made. I wondered if also you could talk about the final um, material manifestation of the work. So it's a C-type print with a UV, I believe it's a UV-based ink over the surface and the text that he's written, which I believe you might even read for us kindly, okay. um, is, uh, is produced in Braille and one can touch the surface, etc. I feel like I've answered my own question there. Yeah, so, um, so what you probably can't see in the image is, um, well, the image itself I actually made with a pinhole camera, which um, I, yeah, I mean, you mentioned that I work with analog film mm -hmm. and I do um, with almost all of my work. And with these ones, I decided to use a pinhole camera. It's actually right behind me, coincidentally, oh, right here. It's just a box. Yeah. Um, but I decided to use it because I kind of like the simplicity of the pinhole camera. It's literally just a box with a pinhole in the front mm. and a sheet of film in the back. Mm. And um, I sort of like that relationship of the pinhole camera to the sighted human eye, um, the way light kind of forces its way through the through the pinhole, through mm. the iris, and then, and then is inverted onto the back of, of the film. Mm. And I also like that there's no view, there's no viewfinder on a pinhole camera, so it removes my mm. or some level of control over what the camera can see and, and record in terms of framing and focus and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to kind of limit my my control in that sense, if that mm. makes sense. Um, I guess it opens it up for some for chance, really. Yeah, yeah. I wondered also, would um, you would you be so kind as to read what he wrote, and we can. Oh yeah, yeah. Give right. his, his words. I've just written it down here. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, I close my eyes, turn my head left and right. I have seen my view of the field. I can feel the sun, a squint to the eye, closed or not. The sound of distant traffic, city. The light breeze on my neck, no sound of wind in the trees, no sense of space, open. The field is perfect. The grass newly mown, but the scent not strong. The ground firm, but softened by a full covering of grass. The field invites, run. The feel of grass on feet, hands, to sit, lay. The sun beats down, it will be hot today. University Oval Cricket Field, described by Mark Flowerday. Thank you so much. So that, so that description that he, he actually wrote and sent to me by email, um, so that exists on the surface of the photograph in Braille. Mm. So in the context of, of an exhibition, you encounter the work, um, which is not too large. I, I wanted it to be kind of an intimate experience. Mm -hmm. um, and you come up to the work and you can touch, touch the Braille on the surface. And in some contexts, um, it, a speaker, a loudspeaker will be below the work and will play this narration. Um, and in other contexts that will exist as a QR code that you can scan and, um, and, and play on your own cell phone to, to listen. So, I mean, I, in some ways I wanted to leave the Braille um, alone, but then that shuts out most people who would be able to experience the work um, because even most people that are blind can't, can't read Braille these days with, with the use of technology. So I decided to have that um, audio component. That's fantastic. And I um, just to finish, I um, I heard that um, he's also a um, potentially an art collector, and that he's actually uh, encountered the work in terms of touch as well. He's literally touched the work. Yeah, he told me he's touched it about five five times. <laughs> so he's <laughs> right. he's a local here in Christchurch. So he um, he was able to visit the work several times um, and experience it himself. So yeah, no, Mark was really, yeah, he's a really special guy. Um, so I think, I think what I like about his description is that he touches on a lot of, he sort of shifts the emphasis away from sightseeing um, and he refers to his own blindness, but also lots of the other senses he refers to, hearing and touch mm. and sense of temperature and the weather and mm. where your body is in relation to a city or other objects. So I think it's pretty beautiful. It, it is certainly. Hey, this is all we have time for. It's a very short segment um, and um, it was a real pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, awesome, Neil. I hope I articulated you. some of that. <laughs> that You've done wonderfully. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you again. You too. Bye. Bye.